Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Berner Tobin here on the Corn School. Today I am down at Kearney Planters catching up with Jay Curtis. Jay, how's it going? Just dandy. Good to see you, sir. Hey, uh, been a while since we've been down. Hey, it's time to get to work. We're going to talk about, you know, corn planters, some of those f last minute fine tuning that we need to do before we roll. You know, um, we talk about, you know, row units. We talk about hydraulics, lots of stuff here. You know, what are some of the things that we need to focus on? Well, the parallel arms, bushings, those kind of things. And, and we'll get to that. We'll, we'll cover that. We'll also talk about hydraulic cleanliness, just different things to be aware of in cer certain systems, hydraulic mm -hmm. systems. Maybe just think about some things that can get you into trouble, different things that have been talked about other than the very basic, but the very basics are very important things and we'll, we'll just cover a little bit of everything. Awesome, so where do we start? Let's start at the row unit. So even emergence, everything starts and stops at the row unit. Very critical parallel arm health bushing wise. Uh, there's ways to improve that if a bushing alone won't do it. Talk to your dealer, whether it's a retrofit or new arms. Check uh, you know, your downforce system. This particular unit's airbags, you might quickly check for leaks. Condition of that before we go to the field. We have our, our uh, trash whippers and no-till colder. If you're so equipped, give that a go over. Make sure everything's gonna last the season. We have a blade and gauge wheel arm removed. You quickly make sure your blades or contact point is shimming and that the blades are gonna still be at least 14 and a half inches when you're done the season. You don't wanna stop partway through to have to do that. Be proactive to look at that. Inside scraper is always wise to change with the blades. It's integral to, to support the whole method of how this works. Investigate seed tube quality, make sure everything's in order at the Mouth of that from perhaps past abuse of not changing the inside scraper enough with your blades. This unit is equipped with Keaton seed firmers. We can see the tail is in rough shape. We have our outside seed scrapers here. Inspect everything. We want our gauge wheel arm to really be adjusted properly and we want it to be tight, not sloppy. We want it to contact the seed blade to keep dry soil out of the seed trench. It's critical to have that even emergence by keeping everything the same. So we finish off the process with a tight closing tail stock. Bushings in here can be repaired. We have, you know, there's many different wheel options available. Um, talk to your dealer if you have a closing issue or you just want a general education. Talk to people that are using other forms other than the standard closing wheel. They work great. There are different options. Let's look at a couple service items of the row unit. Common things that generally wear out and cause us a lot of trouble. The gauge wheel arm that the gauge wheel is attached to, very critical that it, it glides fairly tightly to the seed blade. Not too tight, not too loose. It keeps the dry soil out of the seed zone for that even emergence. Typically, the, 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 the pivoting hardware slops out, eggs out, wears out. We have a couple here examples. There's kits to overhaul these things if we don't want to buy all new products. There are, there are good aftermarket kits that we can use. It'll tighten them right up again. Other brands, we can press new seals. They actually have bushings. We can repair them. And even if the pivot pin on some models, the Skinzy 3000 model, we can replace the pivot. It goes right in there, be tight as new again. Um, closing wheels, the tail stocks, they're pretty good to overhaul. You have to keep them tight. There's different ways about it, whether it's new hardware or overhaul kits. And we'll finish off with uh, a couple closing wheel systems that today are quite popular, it seems. Uh, this Yetter model here, poly spike, they're left and right oriented. You can put those inserts in the current wheel, take the rubber wheel out, put, put those on. You can run one on a row, two on a row. You can, uh, this is a Dawn Curve Tine, very popular. Uh, if you have any, any issue tucking a, a seed trench shut again, those are a great aid to get people on their way. Uh, it's very popular to people to play around with different closing wheel systems. So that's, that rounds that up. 
So something that's so often overlooked is hose connections. Like your tractor, your, your selective control valves on these tractors. Often these tractors are doing a lot of other things. They get hooked up in a hurry, let's go planning. Cleanliness is godliness. To ingest dirt in today's modern systems, like some of these planters have so much going on hydraulically, the idea of ingesting dirt in there, and you wouldn't believe some of the trouble that can cause. So understanding that, take your, take your tractor, gently clean out the, the, the remotes on the back of the tractor. I mean, gently blow it out. There'll be ways of just being gentle about that. There's rubbers in there that can erode and make for even dirtier remotes. All the more, just keep on top of that. Understand that wiping the hoses is really the sign of an excellent operator. Just make sure everything is very clean when you're making your connections. Now, from that we can lead on to some other things, like this planter requires 50, 55 gallons of hydraulic oil a minute to run properly. It's very critical that we understand fully the, the capabilities of the tractor before we begin. We need to have case drains that are zero pressure returns or we'll blow fan seals out. We need uh, motor return hoses, free flow returns. We need to know that those, those, uh, those circuits are understood perfectly. Um, these, this particular planner, everything's well marked. It's good to, to, to make a map in your manual. Make next year's hookups flawlessly perfect. So let's talk more about dirt. As you can see behind me, like we have that alternator that's running all the time. We have the seed fan, the pressure fan for this particular model. And down below we have a hydraulic downforce cylinder system for that's using to keep our row in the ground at all times. So as far as the idea of allowing dirt into the system and the damage that can cause, it's, uh, it's just not acceptable. Be clean about your connections. A final thing on hydraulic systems. Um, we, we really need to pay attention. Quite often, remote systems of today, they are on timers. They're electronic controls. They could be on a timer or on constant flow. Be very aware of your, say, planter lift system, whether it may rephase on the downstroke, may rephase on the upstroke. Be aware of how the system works. It's very damaging to not understand, possibly having a, a system running in constant flow while in a rephasing mode needlessly for a great deal of time. It can damage seals, it can damage the cylinders. Uh, it's, a, it's an excellent tip to just know your hydraulic system.